Hello, everyone. I'm Yuko Shim, ODTM, Open House Chair. Welcome to Ultimate Open House Planning 101 Webinar Part 2. Thank you very much for your participation to the webinar. To support club growth, we started to have the Open House Planning Webinar from January. Today's webinar is the second time this year. I hope we can share efficient information to you. Let's create a good time together. How many of you love Toastmasters? Hey. How many of you like a successful open house? <laughs> How many of you had open house uh, since last July? I see some of them. Okay. Why we do open house? to keep up the club quality, to see potential club members, to have a fun, or for DCP goals, and more. Today, we're an event, event planner. Please listen to the information, how you can apply for your uh, club event. Let's start our journey. We have three wonderful guest speakers, David Kitchen DTM, past district governor, we learn from him successful open house tips. Then Sonia Vasquez DTM, we learn from social media. Are you looking for just guest speaker or keynote speakers? We have powerful speakers in District 1. Mary Singa DTM QS will explain about the speakers bureau. Um, in the last moment, we have a, a question and answer section. So you can see the bottom of your uh, computer or phone, there is a chat corner. So open up the chat. If you have a comment or question, please send the question to the blood stopper only. Blood stopper will take care about your question or comment in the end of the session. So we can uh, do it as a personalized uh, answer. Before lead, uh, inviting the guest speaker, we have an announcement. Club Growth Director Donna Robinson DTM is visiting us. So uh, she will tell you several incentives this, this season. Please help me welcome Donna Robinson DTM. Thank you, Yuko. Hopefully everyone can see me. Okay. Yay. Yes. yes. Okay, great. It is wonderful to be here tonight. I want to thank everyone for being online tonight. Having a successful open house is a wonderful way to help your club grow, to help others see all of the wonderful things that are being done in your individual clubs. It's a great way to showcase the talent of Toastmasters and the various levels of speaking, but also the warm hospitality members or prospective members can expect when they join Toastmasters. I have a few housekeeping reminders as we go through the process because I don't want to speak too long because there's amazing information to be shared with you tonight. Just a few quick reminders. One, membership dues are due. We in District 1 have set up several incentives for you and I'm going to share just really quickly my screen, hopefully successfully. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And I'm going to share. Are you guys seeing? Yes. Yes, okay. I see it. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to close this. All right. And do look at screen. Okay. As I, as I mentioned, we have several renewal incentives through March 31st. There's a lot to share. We share this information at the club contest. Our area directors have this information. If you haven't seen it before or have questions about it, please feel free to reach out to your area directors or anyone on the club growth team. I encourage you to have an open house because I know that there are many wonderful clubs in District 1 and it's an amazing opportunity to open your doors to new and prospective members to show them all of the great things that you are doing in your clubs, but that Toastmaster also has to offer. Thank you, Yuko. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much, Dana, Dana Grab Gross Director. I run the dis, uh, division district director or some other uh, trio member uh, in, this bit, uh, in this webinar right now. Maybe no. Okay. You should hear from Julie Brody shortly. Yeah, Ju uh, is Julie, is he here? No, I don't hear about it. Okay, thank you very much. And Donna will uh, close us uh, share screen, please. Oh, I will close my share screen. Yes. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me just close this really quickly. All right. How do you go? Oh, Julie, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, please oh, help. Hi, Thomas, please. Thank you. I think the lines were still muted when you were asking <laughs> just um. now. I just want to say welcome to all of the members of District 1 that are on the on this webinar right now and congratulate you for choosing to participate in such a lovely evening. We should have some amazing information that you can take back to your clubs to help you tremendously with how to put on an open house and just thank you for your time this evening and I'll turn it right back over to you Go. Thanks everyone. Thank you very much, District Director Jury Blody. So let's move on to the next, uh, to the um, guest speakers part. The first presenter, David Kitchen, says, an effective open house is all about show and sell. David's home club is Lakewood Toastmasters. He and his club officers host open house event to show visitors the future of Toastmasters and sell them the benefit of joining. Just a month, just a month ago, like with the Toastmasters, won both the open house and the level of symmetry challenges. Here to share his expertise, join me in welcoming past district governor, distinguished Toastmaster, David Kitchen. Yay. Well, thank you, Yuko and District 1, particularly our TRIO uh, members. Uh, I'd like to begin with a phrase, a popular one. Can you hear me now? That means I'm asking, can you hear me now? <laughs> so let me, let, me, let me tell you, open houses are very, very important. And one of the first things that Lakewood does is we ask the question, why do we want to do an open house? Meaning that there should be a purpose in conducting an open house. So overall, open houses are to get all members to participate, to show off your club, but more importantly, to attract guests to come to your club and join. Because otherwise, what's the point in having an open house? So at Lakewood Toastmasters, we, we're presidents distinguished each and every year. We have an average of about 15 to 18 members every year, new members, and we conduct open houses to one, have fun, but two, to attract prospects to join our club. And we do all types of things. I was talking with our, our club growth director. We love themes. We have Hawaiian themes, a be a clown theme. I think I was born to be a clown, so that's easy for me. But we have a lot of themes, and themes make people happy. They, they have a lot of fun. We also do things like we have raffles, and raffles always drum up participation. We also do a lot of fun table topics. So table topics, when you're talking about open houses, we like to include our guests. And I, and I realize that might be a little different than what some other clubs do. But here's the question. What is the purpose for attracting prospects to your club if they don't join? Because that's really what the open house should really be about. And at Lakewood Toastmasters, we call our open houses the show and sale because it's all about the show and sale. 
As a matter of fact, there's an old saying, if you're hungry and you're looking at the bacon, good. Show your customers the bacon, but sell the sizzle because it's the sizzle that makes people come back. And we use our open houses to show the features of the Toastmaster because that's the show part. And then we sell them the benefits of being a member at Toastmasters. So the feature, what is the feature? Well, the feature is the what part. For example, it demonstrates the method used uh, to help members enhance their skills. So that's the what. So what's the benefits? Well, the benefits is why we really come to Toastmasters or an open house. It's the result. It's where we show our members how to shine and our guests to return and want to join. And that's the bottom line. We want our seasoned members to participate. We want our new members to get involved. And then we want our guests to feel welcome so that they can have that same feeling and join the club. So that's what we do at Lakewood. And we have a lot of fun. But the bottom line is it's the show and sell. So, for example, we show some of the features. For example, a mixture of participation. We have seasoned members participate, new members participate. We even have guests that participate and we give them ribbons for winning table topics if they do pretty well. Of course, some of them think that's part of our, our stick to get them to join. And, and while that may be true sometimes, you should see the smiles on their face when they get one of these. Yeah, we hand our, our guests one of these, they usually come back. <laughs> but that's the feature. Another feature is like table topics, prepared speeches, uh, evaluations. We even have new member testimonials. And every club has testimonials at, 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 at open houses. But when you think about it, when I was a member, or when I was new and I was a new member, I would look at the seasoned members and all I kept saying to myself is, well, of course they, spoke, they speak well. They've been doing this for a while. I wanted to see someone just like me, someone who was new, some guest to get up and participate. And when I would see a guest participate, that let me know that, you know what, if that guest can participate, so can I. And that encouraged me to join the club. Other features are like the themes. We have food, we have raffles, door prizes. If you come in and you're number five or number 10, you win a prize because people like to have fun. And above all, we like to recognize members. And new members in our club in Lakewood, they're the ones that give the testimonials. So those are the features. But what makes them join is the benefits. You have to sell them the benefits. You have to, you have to show that the, that, the, that the clubs and the seasoned members, they're all planning the open house. It's the how part, it's the result. They learn how to plan an event. We, we also demonstrate how members begin feeling and being a part of the open house. Our guests and visitors feel comfortable and they keep coming back. And here's the, here's the big part. The big benefit, we sell the benefit of how people grow their skills for jobs, promotions, and starting their club. As a matter of fact, 50% of our members have started their clubs as a result of the features we show them in Toastmasters. So as Ralph Smetley says, it's all about the show and sell really. And he says it best, people learn best when they are having fun. People learn best in moments of having fun. So for your next open house, yeah, sure, show them the benefits, but sell them the Toastmaster experience and they'll keep coming back. Thank you, Yuko. Wow, wonderful, wonderful lecture. Thank you very much, David Kitchen. Next, let's go to the next presenter. Next presenter, Sonia Vasquez, DTM. She has been an active member of District 1 Toastmasters for 13 years. During her tenure in Toastmasters, she has served in several leadership roles at the club and the district level. For the last several years, she has supported 
the district publicity team and is currently the district one public relations manager. In this role, she looks to work with the clubs to ensure they are maximizing traditional and the social media strategies to promote their club and club while leveraging the Toastmasters international national brand. Today, she will provide some tips on how best to promote your open house to increase the number of guests in attendance. Please help me welcome Sonia Vasquez DTM. today. Um, let me just get my presentation up so you can see it. Okay. Alrighty. So if you were part of the last webinar, you'll hear a few of the same things because I believe in consistency, but there's some additional items here too. And so that you know on the website and we'll We'll send you the link of, of where all of the, the open house resources are. The, the PowerPoint has been updated, so you will see the, the new PowerPoint. Uh, oops, sorry, hold on. Okay. All righty. So Ralph Smedley has said, the unprepared speaker has the right to be afraid. Well, I don't know if they, they, they should be afraid, but they should definitely feel a little nervous if they're not, if they're not at least attempting to be prepared. And, and the same is true as we're putting on any event and especially an open house. We need to be prepared for it. And David has given some wonderful tips on things that we should consider while we're, you know, for, for when people arrive at our open house. But in addition to preparing the content and, and who's going to speak and if you're going to have food and who's going to pass out the membership forms and talk about membership, you also need to make sure that you are, are preparing your marketing to get people in the door because there's nothing more disheartening than having done all this work and gotten the great speaker to come speak and gotten your club members prepared to speak and nobody walks through the door. So a couple of tips, things that you want to think about, what you want to promote. If you're going to have a keynote speaker, you want to promote that keynote speaker. Um, talk about who they are, why, why people should want to hear them. But even, even additionally, if it's your club speaker, talk a little bit about your, who your club speakers are. And this is on your flyer or any social media you're doing. You definitely want to talk about the club details and sure, the location and all that stuff. But but maybe there's something unique about your club. You focus on humor, you focus on, on uh, evaluations, whatever the case may be. You meet in a really nice location, um, you know, or, or something about your history and, and your past and your accolades, you know. You have a lot of members that have started other clubs, as David noted. But, you know, so, so what is it about your club that's special? And of course, the other thing David noted, you want to talk about the benefits of Toastmasters. You know, you want to put that out there for them. So if they're looking to uh, improve their leadership skills, communication, impromptu speaking, whatever it is, you know, try to put that out there as best as you can. And clearly, there's only so much you can put on a flyer, which is why it's so great to have multiple ways to market your event. And... Ultimately, the best way to promote anything is personal invitation, word of mouth, right? You want your members to be prepared with the information, the talking points, the flyers, um, anything that they, they need to, to get out there. But of course, you also want to make sure that you have flyer dissemination, depending upon where your, your club is. If you're in a corporation, you want to to disseminate to all the floors. If you're in a community where there's other businesses in your community, you want to make sure to get that out there. Of course, social media, we'll talk a little bit about that in, at, near the end, but you know, you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're getting stuff out on, on Facebook, at, for sure on Facebook, but if you can also do a meetup or a Twitter page, anything like that would be helpful. And if you know, you have a local community paper, if they're in a school, or again, if, you're, if your organization has a, if you're in a big company and your organization has a, a newsletter that they send out, you wanna make sure to promote in those things. And you know, if you can, it'd be great if you can pay, some clubs are able to do that, but there's a lot of newspapers that have free forums, a lot of online forums now, so you don't have to 
always just do the print media. Things, other things to consider, you want your communication to be consistent. So what's on your flyer should be the same messages that your members give out, the same types of messages that are on your, your Facebook page. Remember, for many of your guests, this is going to be their first interaction with your club. So you want it to be a consistent, positive one. Your PR strategy should be based on your club assets. It doesn't all have to be on the VPPR or even just their, their, their team. Everybody in the club has some skill that they can bring, whether it's creating flyers, they're good at social media. We know not everybody's great on social media or comfortable with it. So you wanna spread the love. And then make sure that all the members are involved. Again, every member should at a minimum be talking and bringing guests to the, to the, to the event. And you may wanna create guest targets and, and make a contest out of it. Your flyers, flyers should be visually appealing. I'm a visual learner, so I love flyers where that are vibrant and have all the right information, but not too much information. They need to be simple and impactful. It, it's always nice when they align with the Toastmasters brand, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a second as well. And Toastmasters gives us a number of of templates that we can use or modify and create new ones. But if you have somebody in your club that's amazing and a graphic design, then you should tap them and so that they can create something beautiful and unique just, just for you. Uh, in terms of the brand, the reason we want to promote the, the Toastmasters brand uh, is so that, did that change on your guys' screen? Okay, wait, hold on. All right, the, the Toastmasters brand, the reason we want to promote the Toastmasters brand is because it's recognizable. People know it. People are, are aware of, of, for the most part, there's still a lot of people I'm always amazed that don't know who Toastmasters is, but there's a lot of people that, that do. And so people know that if it's something related to Toastmasters, then it's going to be, uh, they're, they're going to expect a certain level of, of, of activity that's happening at that meeting. And, you know, the, again, there's a number of resources. This is the, the logos and templates page. They have resources, they have brand guidelines, you know, showing you what colors to use, what, um, you know, imagery, how you can use the imagery. They're very particular about how you use the Toastmasters logo. And if you're not going to use it in a, if you're not going to put stuff in a certain way on your flyer, then you would, you, you're really not allowed to use the logo. So it's important that you read the logo and are sure of how to use it. And if you have any questions, you can always ask. You can promote through the district. Now we have the ability to, for you to just log in, submit something on the, on the calendar. We encourage you to do it at least two weeks in advance because if you do it two days before your event, who's really gonna see it, right? So you wanna use it. If you don't have a website or your own Facebook or your own Facebook page, once you pop, pop, put it onto the, the calendar, then you can use that link when you're, when you're sending stuff out. Um, and here's some examples of, of people that have put their events on the district um, website. And you'll see it could be as simple as just putting the details in the RSVP link, or you can have a picture and your flyer right there. And again, if you're a club that doesn't have social media or your own website, then you can certainly use this link in any, any social media that your members are sending out. In terms of social media, these are all great places to post, specifically Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube is a place where you're gonna wanna put videos and, and I do encourage you to post videos of your, of your clubs. We're actually gonna, hopefully in the, in the next few days, we'll be uh, getting details out or by next week getting some details out about a campaign we're doing to make sure we get clubs posting videos. But ultimately, you want, you want videos to showcase your club. Again, people are gonna get excited about, about people. And so they're gonna get excited when they see your members speaking, new members speaking, your members growing, testimonials about your clubs. You wanna be able to post that on, on Facebook. Post a testimonial and then invite people to come to your upcoming event. Meetup's really good. You know, if you're, if you're, if again, it's a good place to get people hooked in. If you get enough people RSVPing, then it goes viral and you can get a lot more people uh, on your, on your page. 
on your uh, to come to your event. I don't protest to be, oh, you can barely see the top one. I don't protest to be the best, uh, the expert on social media, but I, I, we do have some great experts in District 1. Austin Uliano from Century City Toastmasters has done an amazing set of presentations at our recent Toastmasters Leadership Institute, but he also has his, his presentation online. There's two ways you can get to it, the, the first link or the, the second YouTube link. And again, this PowerPoint is posted on the, on the district website that I think Brad sent the link out to, so you can, you can get it. The big thing to remember is he always says, it's about awareness. You gotta get people aware of, of your club, what you're doing, engage them, have interactions with them. Once they like your page, connect out. Uh, and then conversion, getting them, getting them to, to go from, from just watching your page to liking your page to posting to commenting, all of that. And, and finally, if you, uh, in, and again, we have a number of resources on the District 1 page. We, you know, I'm always available as a resource. Remember to, to post all your Facebook, all of your events online. And, and any of these tips aren't just for open houses. You can use them just to increase your membership. I know a lot of clubs are struggling right now, and this is, these are great tips to learn and get out there. Um, you can let your VPPRs know that I'll be sending them some information too and tips on, additional tips on ways to promote their club. So hopefully this is helpful and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Oh, let me unshare. There you go. Thank you very much, Sonia. So much information and you will learn about it. Okay, the next speaker, next presenter is Meryl Singer, she is a co-chair of the District 1 Toastmasters, Toastmasters Speakers Bureau. Mayo, a distinguished Toastmaster, is a founding member of Professional Women Toastmasters. In her professional life, as the leadership said, Miracle Walker, she is an Amazon best-selling author, a speaker, and a coach. Check out her current book, Cracking the Relationship Code the key to happy relationships at home and at work. Please help me welcome Meryl Singer, DTM QS. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Yuko. Lovely introduction. Uh, I am here to talk about uh, Speakers Bureau. Now, Speakers Bureau really is not get that to the first uh, the first uh, uh, slide should be what is Speakers Bureau. Aha. Speakers Bureau is a hidden gem of District 1. Not everybody knows about it and it's a wonderful resource. It's a, so uh, the purpose of Speakers Bureau is to be a bridge between Toastmasters, speaking in Toastmasters, and speaking outside of Toastmasters. A lot of Toastmasters are happy within Toastmasters. It's a social, it's a confidence building, but there are some of us that want to be either professional speakers or want to use speaking outside in the community to promote our own business. Speakers Bureau is a great resource for that person. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yuko and I are learning how to give signals and I didn't do this yet. <laughs> um, so, okay, I wanted to say, Speakers Bureau is not a club, it ha there are no dues. And you do need to pass an audition in order to belong. Now that said, what is the value of Speakers Bureau to you? The value is one, either you're interested in giving presentations or 
The subject of this whole event today is it's a resource for speakers for your Toastmaster events. So if you are having an open house and you're saying, she, I'd like to make this interesting. I'd like somebody to speak about something that isn't in this club. Somebody that could be exciting, that would be interesting. Now, where would you go? Aha, uh -huh, I have a clue. You would go to Speakers Bureau. Now, just in case you go to Speakers Bureau just to see what it's like, we have a typical agenda and it, without going into the detail of it here, we have two auditions, two different people auditioning. And by the way, auditions are uh, 18 to 22 minutes and timing as in everything in Toastmasters is critical. So if you wanna pass, you gotta be, you, well, you know what Toastmasters is like. And uh, so it gives you an opportunity at a longer speech. Uh, then what's neat is we get a professional speaker from outside of Toastmasters to come in and make a presentation. And then we can see how they do it out there. And a lot of times, well, it depends. Sometimes we say, ah, I could do better. And sometimes we say, oh, I got to get better. It's really helpful to us to know that. Now, um, here's where Speakers Bureau is located. It's located at Manchester and Lincoln, or exactly at 7166 Manchester Avenue. It's called the Westchester, even though it's on Manchester, by the way, it's in Westchester, Westchester Community Room, which is on the Manchester side. But if you come in the parking lot, it's across from the library. <laughs> uh, people get lost the first time, so, so listen to these clues. Make sure you're on the Manchester side. And we actually do have signs up. Um, and please do come, even if, even if you want to just get us as a resource for speakers, it'll be interesting for you. Uh, now, our meetings are the fourth Thursday of every, of every month, except November and December. We are not going to compete with your Thanksgiving and your Christmas, <laughs> but... If it's any other month up through October, it's the fourth Thursday. So that's it. You don't have to remember which date that I have down there. Just have to remember, is it the fourth Thursday? And then come and see us at the Westchester Community Room. So, but we're talking about you're getting speakers for your events. So if you want to get one of our qualified speakers who has passed an audition and we know that they have a basic speaking skill, uh, then I have a poll in front of me. <laughs> and uh <-huh. laughs> um, you can contact us at D1, that's not DI, that's D1, District 1, Speakers Bureau at gmail.com. D1, Speakers Bureau uh, at gmail.com. And give us a little bit of advance, but even, even last minute, give us a shot. We have been 99% successful. We sent out a, um, a, a mailing to our qualified speakers and we usually have somebody that can make it to your event. So, uh, or here's, here's my information, MerlinSingerEarthLink.net, in case you want to get through there. Sterling Hawkins is my co-chair. He is wonderful. Sterling.Hawkins at gmail.com. And as I told you, Speakers Bureau D1, Speakers Bureau dot com at gmail.com now 
uh, Yuko, could you make the, uh, can you make the picture bigger? I, I can't do it on mine, but uh, they're, they, all of these people are, you've got to get up really <laughs> close to look, but you'll recognize a lot of the people there are qualified speakers. They're not all our qualified speakers, but they are all qualified speakers. And one of them or someone else will be available for your event. So remember, uh, district one speakers bureau.com or you can go on our website right there. Look at that. D1 speakers bureau.wordpress.com. And you can get a close up look at all those people and what they speak about. You may just want us to speak about the uh, speakers bureau. Or you may just want us to speak about Toastmasters. Just say what it is that will work for your event. And we're there. We will have somebody that can help you out in your event. That, and that's, I think, the important thing that I have to say today. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you very much, Mel. Yay. <laughs> Next, um, we, we have a question and answer corner. So, Brad, uh, please uh, uh, tell us some of the uh, question or comment, please. Sure. Brad. All right, you can hear me. Let's see, we have a question here for David. Let me unmute you, David. The question is, do you use club money for prize money for the raffles and door prizes? What do you offer as gifts? That is a excellent question. And uh, briefly, we don't necessarily want to use our, our club uh, money. I do want to say to all clubs, uh, review the protocol and district policy when it comes to spending money for events. So, uh, events uh, like food and, and so forth, we're not supposed to use money, but what we do, we buy material for our clubs. We buy an assortment of gifts from the uh, Toastmasters World Headquarters, like the pins, uh, badges for our members, and other little trinkets, and for our open houses, those are, that's what we use as prizes. So in essence, we're using our budget, but we're not just going to the store and buying things with our, with our, our budget money because we're not supposed to do that. But you can go to the Toastmasters uh, store. Even if you go to the conference, we often have a, a, a Toastmasters store there. And sometimes you, they, have a, they sell little books and, and things like that. And, and people love the, the, the keychain and they love the Toastmasters pin. So we buy an assortment of those from the Toastmasters store and that's what we use as gifts and people love it. That's great, thank you. Thank you for that, David. We have a question here for Sonia. Mm -hmm. Sonia, meet up Facebook. Is there somebody to help, uh, to help clubs set set those up, set social media platforms up? We don't really have anyone specific, but you can um, contact me and ask me any questions. Meetup, I do know some people in the district that are really good at it, so I could reach out and see if they'd be interested and available to at least answer some questions about it. Okay, great, thank you. And for Merrill regarding the Speakers Bureau, would you describe a, a typical meeting on a Thursday night? What's that look like? Yes, I would get, uh, absolutely. A typical meeting is we have either Sterling and I will introduce the, uh, the meeting. Uh, we've just instituted a couple of additional uh, uh, portions of the meeting. One of them is we, we have mentors now for all our auditioners. So our mentor chair will give a report. Uh, and then we have a table topic section, which I think is neat, where people, different people that aren't on the, uh, on the roster or, or on the agenda will have an opportunity to say something that's important to them. 
maybe about their business. Then we have an audition and we have a round robin evaluation. Now our round robin evaluations are noted for being incisive so that it's not, yeah, 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 you're terrific, you're terrific and would move around a little more. I can show, and sometimes they'll give exact, they'll do it for you to show you what differences you could make. It's a incisive evaluations. So audition number one, round robin. Audition number two, round robin. Intermission, then we have a guest speaker with the, usually with the Q&A and we adjourn. And we fit that into 15 minutes. No, <laughs> we need at, uh, at a quarter of, we're pushing it back. Instead of seven o'clock, we're meeting at a quarter of seven so that we have a little time to talk to each other and network. Uh, start at seven and um, we pretty much are done at nine, maybe 9.15. And then people hang around till 9.30 and then I have to chase them out because when that light goes out in the community room, it's very dark. <laughs> two, remaining, two remaining questions on that. Is there admission to the no. meetings and is there food? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the answer to those two questions go together. There is no admission price and there is no food. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, thank you for that. And one last bring your own food. There you, you go. Okay. I think I've just been to a few events where you have had food, so my perception is there's always food. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> and one last question for David. David, you seem very excited about your club and everything that you offer guests. Is every member as excited as you, or is it just you? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's prayer and medication for this. <laughs> you know, if, if you want to get excited, just go visit other clubs. You're going to see some great clubs. We were at the Century Toastmasters 60th anniversary, a lot of energy. But sometimes we go to clubs that, you know, it's, it's not a lot of energy. And it makes you grateful <laughs> to be at your club. But I think a lot of our members are excited. Not as excited as I am, but <laughs> excited nonetheless. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. Thank you, all three. Back to you, Yuko. Thank you very much, all. <laughs> we learn a lot of the, the wisdom and the, uh, tips from all of the, uh, the presenters and uh, also the comments. It is a kind of time, so I have to say, Uh, I can read that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to thank you for we are all international. the international. You should be able to. That's right. <laughs> and also our project members, Mia, Brad, and Donna O'Connell, and district support. Yeah. In the end, I'd like to uh, introduce <laughs> the successful uh, club who did open house since last July. Lakewood Toastmasters, Deluxe Toastmasters, Inglewood Visionaries, Compton Airy the Communicators, Rough Riders, Rough Riders. City of Long Beach, <laughs> Changing the World, Coach Master, Yeah, All right. Cody Toastmasters, <laughs> and Speak Up, no. Speak up, Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, just so uh, I can introduce 10 Toastmasters, but other Toastmasters already did it. So next session, mm -hmm. May 4th, I can introduce more the Toastmasters, Toastmasters Club who did the Open House. Oh, Thank you very much, all. all right. So I think we learned a lot, and it's time is over. We have two months for the next uh, Open House webinar. My uh, main course. Please plan op open house and get a new members and give us a great uh, report for uh, this webinar. 
So, have a wonderful evening. Everybody, good night. Good night. Thank good you. Night.